Hi and welcome to Bellados 3D, my name is Roy and I create Blender Tutorials and in this video I will be creating a low poly flintlock pistol so let's get modelling Okay, let's get started. As you can see on the screen, the screen capture keys will appear in the bottom left hand corner. And I have a, in my UV imaging um, tab, I have a color palette already attached to a material called palette, which I will be applying to my model. And in the main view, you might see a few extra um, lamps in there. That's just to give it a bit of extra light, a uh, bit of extra shading while I'm working. Now, in this video, we're actually going to keep the default cube. We're going to use the default cube. Yes, it's happening. The default cube is staying. Viva la cube. So let's click on it and go into edit mode. And we're going to scale that on the Y just a touch. Just a bit like that. Just like that. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to do Control and R to add a, an edge loop around the middle of the cube. And I want to go into Edge Select by pressing 2. I'm going to click on that edge and shift click all the way around to there. So we've got the four edges on the back and front selected. And we can now bevel it and by pressing Control B. And we will bring that down to about there, I should say. And then what we're going to do before clicking to apply it, I'm going to scroll up once, twice, and to give it a nice little curve around there. Okay, back into object mode, we're going to right click and shade smooth, and obviously that doesn't do a very good job as it is, so what we need to do is go to the object data panel, click on auto smooth, and we just bump that up to 60, and that gives us a nice shaded flat curved surface there with the edges staying sharp. Right, back into edit mode and into front orthographic with one on the numpad. Actually, we need to select by um, this face here by going into edge select, uh, face select mode with number three on the keyboard and select this face now into front orthographic. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna extrude that out and I'm gonna bring it out to, I would say about, I'd say that, out there was far enough and then I'm going to give it an edge loop click once and then bring it forward just just slightly now what I want to do with this end is I need to alt click this edge loop all the way around and I'm going to scale it in on the x-axis sorry on the y-axis about that far yeah, about that far. Now I'm going to scale it by pressing S and Z in the Z axis to bring it to about there. And then back into front of the graphic because I want to bring that up so it's back in line just about. And that gives that the nice little shape of the main part of the stock of the weapon. And now what I can do is I can then click on this um, loop with all selected and Control B and scroll all the way down. I just want to edge loops there to give it a little bit of a curve there right we have the main part of the stock now I'm going to add the barrel and with the barrel I'm going to need a cylinder so I'm going to press shift and a select mesh and cylinder now that's a bit high poly for this so I think I'm going to change the vertices down to 12 and then I'm going to go down to the cap fill type. I'm going to um, select nothing so that there's nothing filling the cap of the cylinder. All right, into edit mode, front orthographic. We need to rotate that 90 degrees on the Y axis. So R, 90, enter. And what we'll do is we'll bring that along on the X axis. So that it's touching there. And then what I want to do is I want to scale that excluding the x-axis by that so that's press s and then press shift x to exclude the x-axis and we'll bring that down so that it's just inside there and then I just want to bring that up just about there 
Okay, so we have the start of our barrel. Now I need to alt select the edge loop on the end and I want to bring that out as far as I need my barrel. And I'm going to have it about there for now. Now obviously it's now sticking over the edge on here so I need to shrink that down. So I'm going to go into right orthographic with the three on the numpad and hopefully I will be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to scale that down so that it's inside just about there and that gives it a nice little taper at the end there and also what I want to do is I want to add two edge loops in here like so and then press S and shift X to exclude on the X I just want to bring them out a little bit okay now I'm going to go back into the stock and I'm going to take this piece here, which is already selected, and scale on the y-axis just to bring that in slightly so that it's uh, a little bit more even on the sides there. And then we have the primary shape of our barrel in place on the stock. Let's click on it and right-click Shade Smooth. And again, down to the Object Data panel, select Auto Smooth and knock it up to about 60. Now what I want with this, um, I want to give it uh, a little bit of a flare on the end of the barrel. Um, not quite a blunderbuss sort of style, but a little bit of a flare. This, this is after all low poly and semi-stylized. Um, so let's go into the um, edit mode, select this piece here. And from front orthographic, I can go E on the X axis. And bring that out to about here and then scale it up now obviously that that curves a bit sharp there so if I alt select this loop here I can then press B and just bring that out slightly and I think I'll give that through it um, an extra scroll on the wheel there and that gives it a nice tapered curve and I think I want on the end here I just want to E X and bring that out just to straighten it off a bit on the tip there we go. Now we need to fill this in. Obviously the a barrel is ho hollow, so uh, we're pressing E and then right clicking so that it snaps back into place. And then we'll scale it down to about the thickness of the barrel, I'd say about there. And then I'm gonna E and right click again. And I'm gonna scale that down again, like so. And then I'm gonna push it back. I um, just wanna push it back far enough to make sure it doesn't, oops. It doesn't go over the lip there. Um, there we go. And we press F to fill that. Now we can start um, colouring what we've done. So let's go over to the Materials tab here and press plus to create a new material slot. And with the drop down, select palette. And now that will give that the colour that I want. Now inside here, I want this to be a very dark metal um, to contrast with the rest of it. So I'm going to, with that face selected, press Control and Plus on the numpad. I'm going to reset the UVs on this by pressing U to enter on um, UV mapping and R to reset. And as you can see, over on the UV editing window, they've spread out across the whole thing. So we're going to press A to select them all, press S to scale, zero and enter to bring them into a zero space so I can now just move them around over these dots and I'm going to move over to my metallic palette which is this area here I'm going to put it on the darkest one there so it's nice and dark in the barrel and gives it a bit of contrast to the rest of the barrel right back into edit mode I'm now going to press control and I and that inverts my selection so that instead of um, having these faces selected I have these faces selected now I've made a little mistake there I've done it in edge mode and as you can see it hasn't selected these edges in here now I could select these edges with control alt and it would um, select the whole thing or I could press control Z to go back switch it to um, face select mode by pressing 3 or clicking on the button up here and then press control I and then it selects the whole of the the uh, faces so I'm going to reset the UVs on there with U and R 
a s and zero to bring it into a zero space and we want to bring it out to a nice little sort of oh i'll press h in by mistake there and hit it we want to bring it up into a nice little gunmetal sort of color and i would say about there would be a nice nice gunmetal color maybe a little bit lighter so i'm going to just move it onto the lighter one there and i think that's about right for the barrel of the flintlock right let's go into the stock of the um weapon and i'm going to select everything you are as zero enter i'm going to give that a woody sort of color let's uh see what sort of woody color let's see what's that one like and mm, i think i need to turn the material on so let's go up here and press plus and add the material and there we go i think that's about a nice a nice enough color for the thing maybe a little lighter let's see if this looks any better no i think that's a bit yellowy that one we'll keep it on that one for now okay and that's the front piece of the stock and the barrel completed okay so now we need to create the handle and to do this i'm going back into the stock and i'm going to select these two faces just here and in front or for graphic mode i'm going to put my cursor about here and press control and right click and as you can see that uh, extrudes it to the cursor now if i bring the cursor down here and press Control right click again and again and again and that gives us the curve for our uh, piece here now with this piece selected down the bottom I'm going into edge mode I'm going to deselect this with shift click I'm going to give that a bevel on the bottom and we'll bring that up and we will have one extra loop in there to give it a bit of roundness and that gives it a little bit of roundness at the bottom right and obviously as you can see the these aren't very smooth along here so i'm going to again select each of these edge loops and press ctrl b and scale them up and i'm going to bring the uh, scroll wheel down because i only need one loop in each and that should now make that a little bit more rounded and there we have the handle of our flintlock and it's starting to look much more like a weapon And next, I think we will start on the trigger guard. So let's click on the stock again, go back into edit mode, because what I want to do is I want to select in face mode this, these faces just here. I'm going to shift D and I'm going to um, right click to put them back in position. And I'm going to press P and selection to bring it out of um the, the model so it's a separate piece I'm going to go back in select everything first things first I'm going to move that to a metallic color and I'm going to have a quite a light sort of metal color there okay there we go and I think if I press S and Y and bring that in just to about there I think that would be about right and now if I press alt and E and then along normals I can then bring that out just just a touch there i think excellent now what i'm going to do quickly is go back into object mode and i'm going to select all three pieces and i'm just going to bring them up a little bit just oh, didn't select that there we go and gc bring them up a little bit so they're in the light there so you can see them not the um, metal a little bit better okay let's go back into the trigger guard what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to select this face here. I'm going to duplicate that by Shift D. And right click. And I'm going to scale that right down to about there. And I'm going to use the same method that I used with the um, handle. I'm going to Control and E. And right click to extrude. And we're just going to shape it into a nice little guard trigger guard shape 
And this doesn't have to be perfect. Because I can go back in edge mode and I can select a loop and bring it out. And bring it out. And let's have a look. We'll bring this bit out a bit. And give it a nice little curve. And I think that one needs to be moved to about there. And it gives it a nice little curve on there. And I think that looks about right. But what I am going to do is... I'm going to, in edge mode, I'm going to select these outer loops. I'm going to give them a little bit of a bevel, just a touch of a bevel, just to give it a bit more definition. And there we have our trigger guard for our weapon. And again, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to... Um, in face mode, I'm going to select this face here, Shift D and right click. I'm going to scale it down quite a bit. And in front mode, I'm just going to move back to about there. As you can see, it's in the uh, in there. And then I'm going to press Control and right click to bring it down. I'm going to scale that slightly. I'm going to do. Control and right click, control and right click, and control and right click. I'm going to scale that right down in the edge mode. I'm going to scale these edges down, and we want to give it a nice sort of trigger sort of shape. And I'm going to move that over to that side, I think, just about there, and back into uh, solid view. And there we have our trigger. That actually may be a little bit far forward, I think. So I'm going to then move that to about central position about there and I'm going to in edge mode I'm going to select all of the edges that are visible I'm going to give them a bit of a bevel I'm going to make this a bigger bevel because I'm a bit more rounded and I'm going to press the up scroll and click on that Oh, and let's go back because I'm, I accidentally clicked by mistake. Press Control B and bring it down about there. And there we have the trigger of our weapon. So now that all, all that's left to do is a little bit of decoration on the side and then the actual flint locks, the um, flint lock uh, mechanism itself. So let's start with the bit of decoration on the side. And I say decoration, it's more a plate for everything to attach to. So I am going to create a plane by Shift A. Mesh plane. And in edit mode, I'm going to select everything. Press R, X, 90. And back into front orthographic, I'm going to position that up here. Obviously, you can't see it very well because of the rest of the model. So I'm going to press Shift and Z to go into wireframe mode. And what I want to do with this is I want to, oops, select this top edge and bring it down. Um, let's see. Bring it down on the Z axis. Um... to about G, Z, yeah, about there, and then again, select the bottom edge, G, Z, and we'll bring that up to about there. I want to put an edge loop in here, and bring that down just below that line, and then select that edge, and extrude on the X, and we'll bring that out to about there I would say and then in vertex mode I'm just going to bring that one by double tapping G up to about there right and let's look and I think we can put two more edge loops in here and then SX to bring them across and I just want to bring these two down 
and bring this one up and maybe bring this one the X just out a little bit just to give it a little bit more of a defined shape and we can just adjust this slightly to make it a little bit less sharp a bit more curved okay let's go back into solid view with shift Z select everything press G and Y and bring it forward and now I just want it just inside there so I can then press E to extrude and bring it out. And in edge mode, I'm going to select all of these edges around the piece. Not that one, that one, that one. Right, so this one, this one, this one, and this one, and this one, and this one. So I've got all of them selected around. And press Control B to just give it a bit of a bevel. A little bit too much of a bevel there. Let's try that again. Control B and just bring it out. There we go. Just a bit. Just like that. Now I think I'm going to put this into Shade Smooth and set the Auto Smooth. And then I'm going to give it the material. The palette material. Back into edit mode, select everything, you reset the UVs, A, S and 0. And then I'm going to bring it up to, we're going to give it a nice shiny colour, sort of. That should be about right there. That gives it a nice shiny sort of metal colour. And now we want this piece to be mirrored on this side. So I'm going to go to the modifier tab, select add modifier and select mirror. Now obviously... That's mirrored in the wrong place. We want it on the Y axis, not the X axis. So we can switch from X to Y. And in this case, it's worked perfectly. You can see it's, it's uh, mirrored perfectly on the other side. And then we have some simple plates on the side there. Next, we need to add the flintlock mechanism. The first things first, we're going to create another plane. So let's press Shift A, Mesh, and a plane. So I'm going to edit mode again, select everything, R, X, 90. I'm going to bring it forward like so and just move it into position up here. Now what I want to do is I want to press Control E and press subdivide and that gives me um, a sub, a, an edge loop across and down. Now I can go over to my menu over here by pressing N and under the edit tab which you may not have because this is an add-on called loop tools um, simple to add it's it comes free with blender just search for loop tools in the um, in the preferences and turn it on and what this does is it gives you a little drop down menu with some options and what I need to use is the circle feature and as you can see that creates a circle out of the the edge loops there obviously this is way too big so I'm gonna just shrink it right the way down and move it into position just shrink it down a little bit further I'd say about there should do it and yep that's about right I'm gonna select these two edges here I'm going to go, sorry, I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'm going to select this vertex here. I'm going to press X and dissolve vertices to make that a flat surface. Then back into edge mode. I'm now going to make sure I'm in front of the orthographic. Select this edge here and control right click to here and then to here. And try again to here. That's a little bit too far. It's a bit trial and error, but it, it does work. Uh, there. And we're going to give it a rough shape and then add extra loops to um, finish it off. So uh, we'll do to here. And then to here. I'm going to scale that down a bit. Then to here. Scale that down a bit more, and then to here, and scale that right down to there. 
because now what I want to do is I want to select this edge loop here, scale that down a bit. And I need to select this edge loop and control B to bevel that. And I need to give that just two loops on there. And that's all I need from that. So now I need to select all of it and press E and just bring it out just about so far. And that should be more than enough. And in face mode, I'm gonna select this face here the one on the back and the one on the uh, side and press alt e along normals and then just bring that out probably about that far should do it and i think this whole thing can be scaled a little bit on the y to bring it out a little bit to give it a bit more Oop. i can select this face here i can press in front of the graphic, I can press E and bring that out and then scale that down. And that's that's the flint on our flint lock. That's what um, strikes the, um, what's it called, a physio fizzle, um, which is a plate on here, which causes the spark. Okay, so we'll just bring that back and I'm going to bring that back so that it's flush against there. One final piece on there. I'm going to select these four faces here. I'm going to extrude them out a little bit and scale them in a little bit. And gives it a little bolt-like shape. So once in object mode, I'm going to give it shade smooth. I'm going to give it a material. I'm going to sort out the auto smooth. And back in, select everything, reset the UVs. And then A, S, and 0 to bring it down to a zero space. I'm going to move that up. I'm going to give it a little bit of a darker sort of metal color there just to contrast it with the, the rest of the metal. Now, obviously, this is looking a little bit sharp. So uh, I'm going to add a bevel to this. Um, go to the modifier tab and select add modifier and bevel. And I'm going to change the line limit method to angle and up that to 60 degrees so it doesn't bevel all the horizontal lines that don't need bov um, um, beveling and then i'm going to bring this right down and we have 0.005 i think and that just gives it a bit more definition so it doesn't look so sharp and I think that looks quite good like that. And now what we need to do is add the second piece of the flint lock, um, which is a metal plate which this flint um, strikes against um, to create the spark. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually copy this. No, I am not going to copy that. I'm going to copy this. And I'm going to bring it GX. Um, forward like so and I'm going to R Y I'm going to right click and press set origin to geometry and then I'm going to R Y and just bring that forward like so because what I want to do is I'll go into it I'm going to delete this top piece we don't need that anymore and I'm going to select the top and fill it. Because what I want to do is... I want to bring that piece back. So... Bring that back that way. Rotate that way a bit. And bring it back. I'm going to scale that like so. I'm going to bring that up. Because now I'm going to select this end piece in edge mode. And I'm going to extrude that so it comes round like so. And scale that end piece in. I'm just going to go back and scale these pieces a little bit. And there we have uh, 
the main bar. What I want to do now is I want to select in face mode, select this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. And again, this piece, this piece, this piece, this piece, and this piece. And press S and Y and bring them right out like so. So it gives it a surface for it to um, strike against. And now if I press S, I'm going to, sorry, switch it to individual origins up at the top there. Press S and scale that in like so. And that doesn't quite seem to have worked. That's why I need to deselect that one and scale them in like so, just to give it a, a bit of a, a thinner look. And S on the X axis like so. And that just gives it a nice little curved plate there that uh, the flint strikes again. And I think if I bring this into the right position and rotate it round a little bit. Yes, I think I'm going to just select this piece and bring it in about here. I think when that comes forward, that will strike against that. Now we have the flint lock mechanism. I'm going to go back into there, and I'm going to select this edge loop here and the piece on the end, because I'm going to make this a darker sort of metal colour, um, because it's a flint, so I'm going to move it down to about there, and gives it a bit of a different colour to that. Okay, so now what I need to do is quickly go back into the stock of the weapon. And as you can see, it's it's rather straight. Um, the handle needs to curve inwards, I think. So I'm going to go into face mode and oh, click this face loop here. Press S and Y and bring that in to about there. And then do the same with this piece here and bring it in just about here. Actually, bring it back out a little bit because that looks a bit pinched. Um, there we go we have the curve for our handle right that looks like we're finished with the flint lock so let's see how it looks okay and you can see our finished flint lock on the screen there rotating i think it looks quite good uh, if you learned something from this video and you enjoyed it please press the like button and share it with your friends and if you'd like to keep up to date with new videos as they come out then hit the subscribe button and press the notification bell thank you for watching and i hope to see you in the next video